whenever we compare two similar funds, the tendency is to prefer the fund which has performed better. But have you ever thought about how much risk was taken to generate that return? Return should not be the only standalone metric for selection of a fund. In fact, investors should keenly be looking at how much risk their scheme is taking and therefore how much return is it giving. And this is where the concept of alpha comes in. Alpha is the measure of performance on a risk-adjusted basis. Let's take the case of two multi-cap funds. Assume that fund A has generated 12% returns and fund B has notched 14%. On the face of it, fund B sounds better, right? Now, if I were to say that fund A got 12% by investing primarily in large cap stocks with only 10% allocation to small caps, and fund B, on the other hand, generated 14%, but by investing almost 50% in small caps. Fund B doesn't sound the natural choice anymore, does it? Here we need to define the concept of risk, because it should not be some vague allocation to a certain basket of stocks, right? In the context of mutual funds, risk is defined as beta. What is beta, you ask? Well, beta is the relationship between the fund's risk in relation to the risk of its benchmark. The risk measure of an index is typically considered to be 1. So, if the fund also has a risk measure of 1, it is considered to take the same level of risk as its benchmark. Higher the beta, higher the risk. And naturally, lower the beta, lower the risk compared to the benchmark. The natural expectation then is that the fund taking more risk should return more also, and vice versa. Let's assume a set of three funds, which are benchmarked to an index giving 12% returns. Fund A has a beta of 1, same as the index. Fund B has a beta of 2, double that of the index. And fund C has a beta of 0.5, half that of the index. If we take 5% as the risk-free rate of return and add 7% for every measure of risk taken, we get a minimum return expectation of 12% from fund A, 19% from fund B, and 8.5% from fund C. It should be noted here that the expectation here is not just to beat the benchmark, but to deliver returns according to the measure of risk taken. So if all three funds deliver 12%, then the alpha of fund A is 0, alpha of fund B is minus 7, and fund C, which optically had delivered the lowest return, is actually the only one able to deliver alpha. So fund B here is the rank underperformer, considering it had taken the maximum risk. So it is incorrect to think of alpha as just the excessive return that a fund has delivered compared to its benchmark. When you're selecting a fund, it is important to see the returns in comparison to the risk that has been taken. And beta is a figure which is now easily available online. So next time you're checking a fund, do look at the risk-adjusted returns.